Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Lansing School District Board of Education. Everyone, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Body? Here. Dr. Burroughs? Here. Ms. Hodgen? Mrs. Lawrence? Here. Mrs. Lilji? Here. Mr. Lopez? Mrs. Moore? Present. Dr. Rodriguez? Present. Mrs. Willis? Present. Quorum is present. Thank you very much. I do have two additions to the agenda this evening, and those will go under uh, action items. I'll be adding action item D and E. D will be a resolution to enter into a purchase agreement with General Capital Development LLC for the sale of 519 West Kalamazoo Street, colloquially oh. known as the Ed Center. And item E will be a resolution to enter into a purchase agreement with the Metro Lansing Poor People's Campaign for the sale of CW Auto Middle School. And we will have I believe we will have council present to answer questions on those items. Any other additions to the agenda this evening? Okay. I know we have two public comment submissions this evening. Bear with me for a moment. Oh, we have three public comment submissions this evening. I'll start with Summer Ledow. I hope I did not mispronounce that last name. Summer, are you with us this evening? She is an attendee, yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Summer, you have three minutes and typically the board does not respond to public comment. We can hear you, so go ahead. Um, okay, so <clears throat> what I wanted to speak about was uh, a situation that's going on with me, um, family, my daughter. So I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, a little background. When my daughter was in third grade, she was stabbed in the eye with a pencil by this child. Um, then in fourth grade, the child uh, threatened to bring a gun to school and kill her. The child... Um, there was some other bullying happening in there, but those were the two big events. The child was suspended. I asked to be let know when that child was going to be, how long or when the child's going to return so I could prepare my daughter. The child was brought back to school. Um, I didn't know. Child was gone a couple days, came back. They had gotten troubled in their classroom. They sent the child to my daughter's classroom and sat him behind her. At that point, I pulled the my daughter from school. Um, and ended up keeping her out of school the rest of fourth grade and started her in a new school because it was so traumatic for her with this child. It was just causing way too much trauma and stress. Um, move forward. Um, she finished elementary school. She went on to Everett in seventh grade. Then... She was in the new tech program at Everett, um, yeah, at Everett, and this child came through seventh, the seventh grade classroom for a tour, and my daughter went into a complete uh, breakdown. Didn't know why. This meeting is being recorded. Um, um, just went into a complete breakdown just by seeing this boy walk into her classroom. Lost it. Couldn't keep. Could not uh, be in. Could not keep in control. So uh, she, we, we got a call, we, we got her calmed down. I was told after meeting with the, t meeting with the staff at Everett that they could make it so that this child would not uh, enroll 
would not enroll in Everett because it was so detrimental to to my child's uh, mental health. So then, Ms. Leto, I'd like to advise that you have 45 seconds remaining. Moving forward to ninth grade, um, now we've done online. She, uh, the child ended up in her class. She's having nightmares. We find out that they're online in the same class. Child is out of, gets moved out. I meet with Dr. Chapman and the principal Gundrum. They tell me that they are going to work to to deal with it. They're going to get back to me. Dr. Chapman's going to work to get something embedded in synergy so that this won't happen to other kids. And they're going to talk to this child's family to find out, is there a reason that they're ever, or is it possible since it's been online that this child could move to a different school? Um, on January, that's in February. Ms. Leto, your time has expired. If you would like to email me your comments that you were unable to make, I will, I will be sure to pass them on to the appropriate person. Thank you for your time this evening. Our next public comment participant is Ethan Schmidt. Ethan, are you with us this evening? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have three minutes, and the board does not typically respond to public comment. Go ahead. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. I want to comment in support of the, uh, the proposal to sell the school building to the Poor People's Campaign, the Advancement Corporation. Um, it, is, it is really crucial that, as a community, we have these community centers available. Um, we have had a sore lack of these independent safe spaces for community members to go to. Um, and having a space within the neighborhood that so many people are familiar with within a community that could really use the variety of different services is really crucial. And um, I appreciate that you're taking, that you've taken the time over these past few weeks to really, or even months, um, to look over this. And I just wanted to make sure that I expressed my support for this. Um, there are, there are a dearth of places that are either not run directly by someone in political office or um, in a political position or somebody not associated with a religion. Um, and it's really crucial that we have a space that is not tied to, it is run by a community of, of different partners and different people. And so um, I have worked with Pastor DJ Knox many times and LaShawn Irby many times and could not have more faith in their leadership and have a lot of faith that this will be done extremely well. Um, there are a variety of partners who have been who have who have uh, expressed interest in working in this partnership, and I think that there's no better way to take use of a school than to make it a true community project. So uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, I appreciate all the work that you've already put into looking over it, and I hope that you support the process. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Mr. Schmidt. Moving on to our third public comment submission for this evening, that is Nancy Schertzing. Ms. Schertzing, are you with us? No. Okay, then we will move on. Gabe, we also have Terrence Gibson oh. as a public comment. Okay. Terrence, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank okay, you. Terrence, you have three minutes and the board does not typically respond to public comment. Go ahead. Thanks so much. I appreciate you all taking the time. Um, to hear public comments today. My name is Dr. Terrence Gibson. I'm with St. John Fisher, um, St. John Fisher College in Rochester, New York, but do a, quite a bit of work with the organizers of the Poor People's Campaign in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, as my colleague Ethan just stated, I am in full support of the community center of purchasing auto, uh, the auto facility in Lansing, Michigan. I think it's quite unique to have a comprehensive community-based center in Lansing, allowing Lansing to be on the forefront of many uh, of the community concerns and community wellness campaigns taking place to really address some of the critical concerns happening at the individual and community levels. I think Lansing would have a wonderful opportunity to really be on the forefront of some of these innovative interventions that are being proposed by the community center, like a comprehensive mental health um, facility, um, a comprehensive health um, health planning and, and wellness planning opportunities, educational opportunities for students um, to get additional supports in the Lansing areas, and as well as the community garden that they're planning, um, as well to, to address some of the food insecurity concerns of many residents in the Lansing area. 
Yeah. And all together, I believe, uh, really in the totality addresses many of the concerns that we all have in Lansing in terms of addressing several of the inequities for many of our um, communities in the Lansing area. So I'm in full support of this center as really being a comprehensive model to really, really uh, do some wonderful good for community members in Lansing who may need additional supports. And with that, I will yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. We appreciate your comments. Moving on to our first presentation for this evening, that is the COVID coordination team presentation. Sam, I'll turn it over to you. Hey, my last board meeting, I finally remembered to unmute myself before I talk. So I'm, I'm, I'm one for a one today. Uh, thank you, President Lawrence. Uh, this will be our monthly COVID report from our COVID coordination team. Um, not sure when our next one will be. Probably we'll we'll give them the month of July off, and we'll have a meet, and we'll have them uh, talk to us in August about the beginning of the school year. So I will turn over to Cordelia Black, or I see Sue Wheeler. So mm -hmm. please go ahead. And make sure. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Sinekropi. It has been a pleasure to work with you and your team throughout this year. I am going to share a screen with you now. There we go. This has been the year of COVID and what a year it's been. The World Health Organization declared COVID to be a pandemic 15 months ago on March 11th of 2020. Two days later, we suspended in-person instruction and began a truly reimagined learning plan for our students as COVID spread around the world and in our community. The executive team appointed, sorry, It's been a year of doing this too, and uh, Sam, I'm not uh, been quite as successful as you are with the unmute button, I'm afraid. Uh, Mine was easy. The, yeah, <laughs> the ET appointed the school nurses uh, to serve as the COVID coordination team, better known as the CCT in November, and we quickly adopted key metrics to monitor for a safe return to in-person learning. We developed a district-wide exposure plan and mitigation strategies to ensure the health and safety of our students and staff. In January, We began using the My Symptom Screener for online health screening tool for all staff. The CCT monitors staff health screeners throughout the day and responds quickly to any at-risk screeners. The CCT provided case management of more than 50 positive cases and 220 primary contacts over the past six months. We provided professional development and COVID updates to our staff with secretaries, the athletic department, and isolation room attendants receiving dedicated in-service sessions. Throughout the school year, we watched as the metrics were rising and falling. In February, which is here, in February, the cases per million were at the highest risk levels with more than 220 new cases per million in Ingham County. By the end of May, once more, by the end of May, the numbers had fallen to 76 new cases per million. And yesterday, there were only 11 cases per million and a positivity rate that was less than 2% in our community. Our commitment to the health and safety of our school community through science-based decision-making and programming has led to brighter days ahead. 
On July 1st, all staff will return to in-person work. Next week, students will begin the Summer SOAR program, and we are preparing for students to safely return to in-person learning in the fall. At this time, mitigation strategies are evolving, and anyone who wants a COVID vaccine can get one. Almost 50% of Ingham County residents are now vaccinated. This has been a challenging year with so many staff, students, families, and community partners working together to keep our students healthy while staying on track to achieve academic and vocational goals. Our hard work has paid off and we look forward to brighter days ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, before we take any questions, I just want to uh give a, a big, big shout out to the COVID coordination team, as Sue said, included our school nurses. They have done outstanding work this year. They've kept us informed. They've kept us safe. And uh, yeah. Sue, we owe you guys a lot. And just oh. I want you to make sure you let them know that. So thank you very much. Yeah, are there you any, are oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, President Lawrence, I'll turn it over to you to see if there are any questions. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, CCT, for all the directions and the way you navigate us during all these difficult days. Um, some districts or some schools in the nation are going to vaccinate students, all students, uh, when they come to the school. Um, do we have any idea if what we can do, or if we are going to do it, or it's a possibility. What what we can do with the students to protect them? Uh, thank you for that question. We have already partnered with Ingham County Health Department and have offered five different vaccination clinics at our schools uh, with actually this week we were headed into the second dose for many of our students. So we are working closely to uh, try to vaccinate as many students as possible. And of course, the FDA has not yet approved the vaccine for students 12 and under. So our young Youngest students are not yet eligible for the vaccines. Any other questions from board members? Got, uh, President Lawrence, uh, Ms. Willis and Dr. Bodies have her hand up. Okay, Mrs. Willis, if you can go first, then then Dr. Body can follow you. Thank you. My question was just regarding now that we have this updated information, what the next steps would be for us to publish the calendar for next school year and what um, options we're going to have as far as making sure families know <clears throat> that they have the K-12 online option if that's what they want to choose for virtual or going back into bricks and mortar. I'll uh, jump in for that one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we are working on that. We have... Uh, uh, we are going to be announcing soon uh, some enrollment opportunities for, for parents and students uh, throughout the city and throughout the summer. We'll do some mobile operations so that we are going to the people, kind of, so to speak. We also um, are looking at what face-to-face -face will look like in the fall. And we do not have, and I think Sue said it best, is the uh, metrics and mitigation that comes from uh our own government and from CDC is changing daily. So we will be looking at that right up until the time school starts as far as how we, what our uh, health and safety rules and regulations will look like. So do you have, would you add anything to that? I agree completely. This is a, uh, a changing scenario and we will stay on top of it. Dr. Body. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I have two things. The first thing is I just want to thank the COVID-19 team for uh, sticking to the science, regardless of pressure from the public. Uh, I want to commend you for trying to make this process as data-driven and evidence-based as possible. Uh, my second uh, thing that I want to convey is that uh, uh, it is 
it is great news for our community that the test positive rate is as low as it is right now. But I do still want, and I know people are probably sick of hearing this, I do still want to urge caution. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet. We don't have herd immunity yet. And I am seeing some really heartbreaking cases of people that are hospitalized uh, and, and getting really, really sick from COVID because they chose to not get vaccinated. Uh, so uh, by and large, uh, essentially uh, all of our hospitalized patients with COVID are folks who were reluctant to get the vaccine and unfortunately have, have uh, suffered the consequences of that decision. So if you're out there, you still haven't gotten your vaccine yet, uh, please reconsider that decision and please continue to take appropriate precautions until you do uh, complete your vaccination series because although the test positive rates are low, uh, it doesn't matter if that person that gets it ends up being you and now you're in the hospital for, uh, I just saw a patient today that was hospitalized for six weeks uh, and just got out. Um, so I want to uh, once again thank thank the district and also urge uh, everyone that follows the district, that's a member of the district, everyone who's a parent or a student in the district to still uh, uh, observe caution until you get yourselves and your families protected. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Body. Any other questions from board members this evening? Okay. Thank you very much, Sue, for being with us tonight. So happy to hear this new updated data. Uh, moving on to our next presentation this evening, fiscal year 2022 budget. Sam. Thank you, President Lawrence. Um, we presented, uh, had a public hearing at 530 today in the PowerPoint that the board members have received. And most, I think most of the board members were in that particular meeting. I would ask now if you had any questions uh, and we, we didn't really think we should show it again. It would be the same thing two times in a row. So are there questions about what was presented uh, at our last board meeting on June 3rd or questions from tonight's presentation? <clears throat> Ms. Mrs. Willis has her hand up. Rachel, go ahead. I don't have any questions, but I'm just wondering if we could go over the summary resolution for any members of the public um, who may okay. not have to our broadcast. Sounds good. John, can you uh, put the summary page up, please? Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I'll first show the um, revenue summary and then the expenditure summary. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Proposed resolution for 165 million in uh, revenues for this year. And then uh, back up, back up, John, John, back up just for a second. Just so I just want to make sure everyone's clear the uh, F22 proposed resolution when John is talking about total revenue is in the bottom right hand corner, just a little over. Thanks, John. There you go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yes. So the budget member three that was passed a few weeks ago, yes, was 168. So FY22 proposed resolution for revenue is around 165 million. And then kind of a similar, uh, which a lot more data because of the categories of expenditures, but total uh, projected expenditures of just under 176 million. 66. Uh, 167 million, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so plan fund balance of just under 2 million um, based on what we had uh, had in our budget amendment three. Uh, fund ending fund balance of around uh, just under 14 million. So that carries over to the beginning fund balance of for this upcoming year. So down to about 12 million for our projected fund balance for next fiscal year. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, and John did mention earlier, and I will just throw it in one more time. We are, it's as Sue, we talked about at our COVID-19 update, that this is an ever-changing uh, target here in terms of what funding is coming and when it's going to get here and everything else. We do have a, 
a rough idea of what we're supposed to have, but we just don't know when we're going to get it yet. We may end up getting the, at that 43%, which is around 13 million of funding before June 30th. And as we have talked about, Kim and John and the first budget amendment that you'll probably look at in November or December, I'm sure it's going to be very different than maybe what we've seen in the past because there's going to be at least a lot of changes with it. So uh, hopefully those things will come and we can start moving forward and, and have a really good idea of what we're doing. The other thing is, uh, as our new superintendent, Ben Schuldener says, we need to work on enrollment. We need to make sure that we get, his, get his, our students in, in the classroom when we're ready to roll in the fall. Uh, other questions? None, none in this room, so unless someone virtually none, has None on the up. screen. All right, then let's move on to our report from Superintendent Sam. Oh, man. For my final report as superintendent, before I start, um, this past week we had two tragedies within our school district. Two of our uh, students, uh, members of the Everett football team, died tragically this week due to gun violence. Um, I would like us to take a moment of silence for Marshawn Beard and Jamaris Leak. Thank you. You will hear more about uh, these two young men. Um, Everett is working, I want to commend Everett and some of the nursing staff and some of our special education staff and our SSSs and so on who've helped uh, Everett students and staff and families work through this these tragedies. We've gone through, okay, from my report, we've gone through a lot these last 15 months. It was nice to see that our students had a graduation day, had senior awards assemblies, had a prom, and many other year-end celebrations across all grade levels. It was, it was time to say goodbye to our seniors, our staff retirees, and others. Many of our students will have post-secondary experiences as we look forward to watching them spread their wings and soar to new heights. The Did You Knows tonight reflect on some of the activities that I've just talked about. I want to take a few minutes to thank those who have helped me a lot in the way as I end my journey with the Lansing School District. And I started out from when I started. So uh, the first, I'm going to mention about 10 names here. Chuck West, and probably nobody knows Chuck West. He was my first boss when I was a night custodian at Averill Elementary School. Uh, Denny Semra, Bob Gann, Jan Lawrence, Mark Burkholder. Bill Helder, Dick Halleck, Alda Henderson, Fred Whiting, Diana Rouse. These were all my bosses at one time. I had a lot of bosses over the years, you know. I thought they were old, some of them, when I had them as bosses. And man, I look at myself now and I, it's like, yeah, I was, I'm them now. Um, I want to thank Vivian Weatherspoon, my first teaching partner. Um, Maxine Kane. Larry McQueen, John Shinsky, the teachers, families, and staff, and students from Cavanaugh Elementary School, where I spent 11 years, and there's too many to name. Uh, I'm just going to use a couple of first names here. Yvonne and Teresa recently, all of the members of the current executive team. I cherish the moments we've had. I really do. The Board of Education, and most of all, my family. The LSD will always be in my heart. Now for the did you know. Uh, I have no idea who's going to go first. So, uh, Jessica, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for smiling, right? <laughs> That's right. You look like you were ready. <laughs> there you go. Uh, did you know the technology department collected approximately 4,300 devices over the last three days? If you could not make it this week to return your child's device, Clinic Hours at Hill will be held next week, June 22nd from 2 to 5, June 23rd from 9 to noon, and June 24th from two to five. A big thank you to our wonderful technology department, volunteers, and also to our families. Thank you. Uh, Cordelia, please. I must have been smiling too. You were, I saw that. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. Did you know that the STAR grant funded two day camps this week for nearly 100 students uh, to go to Ever the Ebersaw 
um, our environmental education center. Students were able to get outside and finally have some fun. Uh, they were engaged in numerous outdoor, outdoor activities such as guided hiking, fishing, archery, and canoeing, just to name a few. They were also hey. able to reconnect. Oh, I'm sorry. They were no, also no, I'm sorry. Able, I'm sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> that's okay. They were also able to reconnect with friends, teachers, and support staff. I'd like to give a big thank you to the Star Grant Director, Kyra, Mr. Kyron Harvell, and other staff, chaperones, for supporting this fun day for students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Lang. Good evening. Did you know the Lansing School District wrapped up our school year last Friday and 15 continuous months of meals distributed to our students, families, and community during the pandemic? We will continue to offer meals throughout the summer at 28 curbside pickup locations and for 21 summer SOAR programs. These past 15 months, our Sodexo Magic Crew handed out 2,364,000 225 meals. And I'll repeat that for you, uh, President Lawrence, because you always ask for that. Uh, 2 million. <laughs> 364,225 meals. That averages out to over 5,200 meals per day. If you're at one of the distribution sites or happen to see our food truck at an event this summer, please take the time to thank the Sodexo staff for being a true partner to the Lansing community. Pamela Diaz, Dr. Diaz, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you know that this year was the first year we have broadcast live via YouTube our graduation ceremonies? In this current remote environment, this has been a great way to share all of the things that are happening in the Lansing School District. As of Tuesday, there have been 4,371 views on our graduation ceremonies, which does not account for multiple people watching at the same time. The totals for each graduation ceremony as of Tuesday are Everett, 2,134 views, Sexton, 778 views, Eastern, 946 views, and adult ed, 513 views. Thank you for taking the time to support our students and view our graduation ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sergio Keck. Good evening. Did you know that on Tuesday evening, we celebrated the first graduating class of the newly created Fire Science Academy? Nine students in 11th and 12th grades completed a year long program to learn the basic skills of becoming a firefighter. The 11th graders will have the option to enroll in the Lansing School District Emergency Management Technician EMT program next fall, setting them up to be fully qualified to enter the honorable profession in fire science. This program has been created through the collaboration of the Lansing School District and the City of Lansing. We look forward to growing this partnership that helps our students dream big about their futures and benefits our community. Thank you. Thank you, executive team. Uh, President Lawrence, that concludes our report for tonight. Thank you very much. Moving on to routine matters and old business. First up, we have committee reports and the facilities committee, Mr. Lopez. Yes, ma'am. Um, the uh, committee met uh, maybe last week or two weeks ago. Something like that. Um, we discussed a couple of items, and, and three items are here for action today. We have the um, renaming of a building. We have the um, uh, sale documents for, for auto and the uh, uh, building uh, West Junior. Okay, so those are on the agenda for action tonight. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Any questions for Mr. Lopez? Okay, Promise Committee, Mr. Lopez, back to you. Thank you. Uh, I have no report. Uh, we haven't met. Uh, we'll meet next month, and then I will bring a report. Okay, fair enough. Equity Committee, Mrs. Willis. Thank you, Madam President. I don't do not have an update to share regarding the equity committee. Okay, uh, Policy Committee, Mr. Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. The we sent to NEOLA all the policies that need to be revised, and we received them today. Then we will have a meeting very soon to study all of them and um, present all of them to the Board of Education. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Moving on to our consent agenda for this evening. Uh, may I have a motion? Madam President, I had a question for Dr. Rodriguez. Oh, I'm sorry. Regarding... Yes, Mrs. Willis. <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez, I just wanted to check to see if the I just wanted to check to see if the policy committee had had a chance to review any recommendations regarding the Crown Act for non-discrimination non for natural hair. I can't hear her very well. I wondered if there was any um, consideration for the Crown Act, non-discrimination for natural hair. Did you talk about that? No, that will be part of the agenda. <coughs> And that one and the other one, identification with gender and all other things, they are coming. They will be discussed. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Madam President. Mr. Lopez. I move that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Lopez, supported by Dr. Rodriguez. The consent agenda this evening includes the approval of the June 3rd regular board meeting minutes and the receipt and approval of the treasurer's report. Any discussion or comments on the consent agenda? Dr. Burroughs. Hi, uh, very quickly, uh, the beginning cash and investment balance was about $19 million. Receipts were 12 million and disbursements were a little over 15. Um, the ending general fund cash and investment balance uh, at the end of May was 16.8 million, and the general fund and cash and investment balance is 5.8 million dollars higher than it was at the same time last year. Uh, we received uh, several donations to the district uh, this last month uh, from the Blackbaud uh, Giving Fund, the Mildred Stinson and Brenda Foster, Jersey Mike's Corporate, Eastern Alumni Association, Amazon Smile, and Thomas Gonzalez. Um, thank you, everyone, for your support of the district. Mrs. President, this concludes the Treasurer's Report. Thank you very much. Any other comments or discussion on the consent agenda this evening? Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Boddy? Yes. Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Ms. Hodgen? Mrs. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Willis? <clears throat> yes. Motion passes. Thank you very yeah. much, everybody. Moving on to action items this evening. First up is the approval of fiscal year 2022 tax levies resolution. May I have a motion? Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Hodgen? Uh, that the 18 at Valori Mills as reduced by the headline amendment shall be levied in 2021 on the taxable non homestead and non agricultural agricultural property located within the Lansing School District be adopted as presented in this resolution. Support. Thank you very much. It's been moved by Mrs. Hodgins, supported by Dr. Burroughs. Mrs. Willis, would you do the honors? All right, our annual Shirley reminder. Yeah. This is just a reminder that the school district is not levying new taxes. This is just our amendment. Every year we have to actually collect the taxes. You guys, I'm getting rusty. It's not coming out as good as it used to. <laughs> anyway, um, we have to <laughs> levy the, the taxes. We actually have to tell the municip municipalities to pay us. So we actually have to pass a resolution twice a year to, to receive the taxes that we already levied. This is not the school district implementing any new taxes. Now I feel like I need to go back and watch old videos and get my speech. <laughs> <laughs> Thank about you so much, Mrs. Willis, and I'm so happy that you knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I love and appreciate you. Any other questions or discussion on this item? Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Body? Yes. Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Ms. Hodgen? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Willis? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Moving on to approval of the fiscal year 2022 budget resolution. May I have a motion? Madam uh, President. Dr. Rodriguez? I recommend, I recommend that the, the board 
of Education approved the fiscal year 2022 budget resolution as presented. Support. It's been moved by Dr. Rodriguez, supported by Mrs. Hodgen. Any discussion? Okay. Well, good job, John Lang. Will the clerk please call the roll? Great. Dr. Body? Yep. Doctor, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Mrs. Hodgen? Yes. Mrs. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilchi? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Willis? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next item this evening. Um, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education rename the Wainwright Conference Center to the Dr. Holly J. Halleck, Richard J. Halleck Professional Development and Leadership Center. Support. It's been moved by Dr. Do Dr. Halleck, I was about to say, it's not been moved by him, that would be awkward. It's been moved by Dr. Rodriguez, supported by Mrs. Hodgen. Any discussion? Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, it will be difficult to pay back to Dr. Halleck and his family and all the people that worked with him for so many years in Lansing School District. He started in CW Auto and finished as superintendent 16 years. Then um, he want to get more than what really that present him, but I am happy that from now on, I can go to this conference center and be re reminded of his actions and his name and everything that he did for our community and our district. Then it's an honor for all of us to rename Wainwright Conference Center to the Dr. Richard J. Halleck Professional Development and Leadership Center. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for those comments, Dr. Rodriguez. Any further comments from the board? Or the superintendent? Yeah, real quick. Uh, this is a, a long time coming, and I'll just echo what uh, Dr. Rodriguez said. And you know, if uh, if you need any incentive, it's it's his fault that I'm here right now because he hired me as a principal <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, so I I know he's going to appreciate this. So uh, that's all I'll say right now. What, was he made aware of this, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. With uh, no further discussion from the board, will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Body? Yes. Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Mrs. Hadgen? Yes. Mrs. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Willis? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for your hard work on this. I know like Sam said, this has been a project that's been in the making for a long time. Dr. Halleck's youngest daughter, Molly, and I graduated from high school together in 2000 from the best high school in the land, JW Sexton. Oh, Mrs. Willis, God. I see oh, that oh, eye roll. Your oh, eyes are gonna get stuck that way. Um, so we're very excited <laughs> to be able to honor a longtime member of our community in this way. Thanks everyone. Moving on, we do have two um, items that were added to our agenda this evening. May I have a motion? And if you don't remember the words to my motion, let me know and I'll provide those. Yeah. On the sale of uh, yeah, the you need this sale. Okay, the, the motion would be that we, if you wanna just say that you're making the motion, then I'll read it. Yes, right. I think that's okay. Okay, then let me, let me get to those uh, items, please. You want mine? Okay, here we go. Here. Oh, he, had, he has that. Yeah. Oh, I have it. Okay. Well, it has nothing oh, uh, uh, Madam President, it's, it's a resolution to sale. So I move that we approve the resolution to sale the, um, to enter into a sale agreement uh, for the CW Auto Schools 
with uh, uh, let me see da, 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 da. oh yes with the um, uh, Gryphon Group LLC and uh, I think that's it right so there Gryphon. are there are actually um, there's just three there are two that we're considering no yes this evening no I'm sorry there are three that we're considering this evening and the yeah. first one would be that we enter into a purchase agreement with the Metro Lansing Poor People's Campaign for the sale of CW Auto Middle School and then that we enter into a purchase agreement with the Griffin Group for the sale of the, the, the land. Yeah. Are those your motions? Let's do them separately. Can we do Metro Lansing Poor People's Campaign first? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So um, I move that we um, approve the resolution to sell the property to people's uh, campaign. If I could CW just Auto. tweak the language a little bit that we enter into a purchase agreement with them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Give me the motion and I'll second it. I just have it like jotted <laughs> down on a sticky <laughs> note. So the, the motion is that we enter into a purchase agreement with the more Metro Lansing Poor People's Campaign for the sale of CW Auto Middle School, if that's okay with you. Yeah, so moved. Okay. It's been moved yeah, yeah, by Mr. Lopez, Lopez supported by Dr. Rodriguez. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion in regard? So to refresh everyone, this is the Poor People's Campaign will be purchasing the building, the Otto Middle School building, and turning it into essentially a consortium of uh, community service. service providers. Yeah. We've had a lot of discussion on the facilities committee about this move. We think that it will be a great thing for our community. We're excited to move forward. Sam, is Gordy present to answer any questions that board members might have? Yes, he is, and Mrs. Willis has her hand up. Okay, Mrs. Willis, go ahead. I just have a question about the <clears throat> resolution agreement itself and the resolution. Um, it indicates that the board authorizes and directs Ben Schuldiner, the superintendent of schools, um, to execute this. And so I don't know if we want to, to delay the execution of this or how this works, um, given that until July 1, Mr. Sampson Akropi is technically our superintendent. Could we, could we change that resolution to say the superintendent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's an excellent idea, yes. And the reason that we put uh, the new superintendent is um, all of these purchase agreements are uh, are in the process of being uh, negotiated and finalized. So the work's in progress right now. So what you have before you, and I thank you for considering these purchase agreements tonight. The reason that we're trying to move them forward is that both the uh, vacant land at Otto that the Griffin Group proposes to buy and then the, uh, the West uh, Junior High School General Capital Development proposes to buy will be MISHTA projects and their funding requirements and timelines. So uh, that's why we're asking the board to move forward tonight. The purchase agreements will be subject to further negotiation. If there are material changes, we'll bring them back to the board. But um, Sam and, and um, I th and Rachel, I, I think it's an excellent idea we put superintendent because we- Yeah, we I would, I would say that's just my recommendation. Let's just say superintendent because you never know between now and July 1st, a lot could happen, so. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank what's you. That, hey, wait a minute, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. If 2020 has taught us nothing, there's no- Well, that's true, right? that's true. <laughs> I yeah. just wanna make sure. That's, that's terrible to see. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Willis, for pointing that out. Any further questions or comments from the board? I would just ask that we, um, if it's okay with the uh, uh, um, approvers of this um, resolution that we say as amended to reflect to say the superintendent. Sure. Okay with you? It's amended, except. Okay. okay with Mr. Lopez. Okay, if there are no question, further Questions or discussion from the board? Will the clerk please call the roll? And just to clarify, this is only on uh, the sale of the auto building to the Metro Lansing Poor People's Campaign. Right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Body? Uh, yes, emphatically. 
<laughs> Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Mrs. Hodgen? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. I'm policy. Mrs. Willis? <laughs> yes. Motion passed. Thank you very much, everybody. That's exciting news for our community. Yes. Our next um, part of this will be the sale of the land to the Griffin Group. Right. May I have a motion? Madam President. Mr. Lopez. I move that the um, we enter into uh, negotiations to sell the CWO uh, property to the Griffin Group. I think we enter into a purchase agreement for this. Purchase we'll just we'll restate enter. the previous motion and change the names of the parties. I Sound good? Me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, and to Back clarify, then. okay, great. <laughs> to, okay, it's been moved by Mr. Lopez, supported by Dr. Rodriguez. To clarify, to refresh us, this is the sale of the land surrounding the auto building to the Griffin Group, and this land will be used to develop housing. And as Gordy said, this is contingent upon MISHTA approval for that housing project. But again, we think this has great potential and great opportunity for our community. Any further discussion, other discussion, Mr. Lopez? Yeah, and, and certainly it's a the timing issue too. That's why it's here tonight uh, for, for all three of this, yep. uh, this timing, because they, they need to submit paperwork to MISHTA and others, and so time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any discussion from board members in virtual land? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I just want to clarify, it's, it's for housing. Um, is, is the intent it, for it to be uh, middle income and affordable housing? It is, the, the intention is to be for affordable housing. Gordy, please correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Multifamily, uh, mischief uh, funding, which would uh, involve uh, a, a market rate uh, and based upon the community. So you're, the answer is yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Further discussion? Madam President, I just want to point out for this resolution and the one that we will consider for the Ed Center to amend to say the superintendent shall enter into negotiations. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Boddy? Yes. Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Ms. Hodgen? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Willis? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. You didn't vote? You didn't vote? You Dr. Didn't Rodriguez? Vote. I forgot your name. <laughs> what do you think, Dr. Yes. Rodriguez? Yeah, okay, it's a yes from Dr. Rodriguez. <laughs> Moving on to our final piece of this pie this evening is the sale of the Ed Center. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, say motion, change the name. Okay, sounds and change great. change the, the name superintendent to superintendent. And so I so move. Beautiful. Oh. It's been moved by Mr. Lopez, supported by Dr. Rodriguez. And one more time to refresh everyone, this is for the sale of the Ed Center, which is adjacent to uh, the building that we're currently sitting in, the administration building, and this is to sell, sell the property to the Lansing Housing Commission and their partners in order, again, to develop affordable housing. This will be senior housing, it will be 55 and up, and again, this is also contingent upon MISHTA approval. Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Are we going to lose any parking space? We are not going to lose any parking spaces. Okay, thank you. That You're welcome. Yeah, take my, my vote. I checked. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion from the board? <clears throat> okay. Will the clerk please call the roll? Dr. Boddy? Yes. Dr. Burroughs? Yes. Mrs. Hodgen? Yes. Mrs. Lawrence? Yes. Mrs. Lilji? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Willis? No. Yes. La Caldera de Caldera. Motion passed. Thank you very much, everybody. Great uh, uh, news. Ma Madam, Madam President? Mr. Lopez? 
Yeah, I just want to mention that these two buildings have been hard to, to move. They've been on the market for a long time. And I think it's going to be, uh, should everything go right, it's going to be a plus for the city, plus for the school district. And those, those two buildings will be used for community purposes. They won't go to the wayside. And uh, two great projects and certainly the uh, development of the um, uh, auto property as well. I mean, it's, uh, it's great that we found um, individuals wanted to develop this property. So hopefully everything goes well and those buildings would put to good use, again, for the benefit of the community. Absolutely. Thanks, Mr. Lopez. <clears throat> Moving on to new business and discussion items for this evening, I would like to discuss Sam Sinekopi. Discuss him? Uh, discuss him? I would you know, have President, to no. Mrs. Willis? Can I um, ask for a point of privilege before talking about Mr. Sinekopi? I wanted to raise an issue related to the, the death of our uh, of our students, and I want to talk about that before we talk about Mr. Sinekropi so that we can end this meeting on a Sounds high Sounds great. Note. Yes, go ahead, Mrs. Willis. Okay, thank you. I want, to, I want to do that first, and then let's celebrate Mr. Sinekropi. I And Mr. Sinekropi... Um, I'm sorry that we're even co-opting any of this time and that we have to talk about this, but first I want to start out by thanking the superintendent and executive team and staff for the way that you have responded to the uh, family and staff at Everett High School. Um, but we shouldn't have had to do that. Um, and this past week, we've lost the life of three teenagers due to gun violence and another two teens have suffered significant injuries at the hands of gun violence. These are our kids. Um, this is our community, and that loss of life is unacceptable. I think that as a school district, we have an opportunity and a responsibility to call for action and have a seat at the table with partnership with the city of Lansing to address these issues. And so my request, Madam President, is that the Board of Education <clears throat> execute a plan to meet with the city of Lansing and community partners um, to address to work on addressing the issues. I know that there's a lot of groups going on. There's, there was a balloon reset at the school. We've had different organizations that are involved, but we as a school district have a responsibility as well. Um, and this, is, this isn't political for me. This is, it shouldn't be, and it, I don't think it's political for any of the members of this Board of Education. It's about safety and welfare and how do we create that sense of safety for our students and families. Um, and so I know I'm, I'm not alone in that thinking, Madam President, and so I just wanted to lift that for a point of discussion. Thank you very much for bringing this up, Mrs. Willis. And I would like to announce that in partnership with the City Council President, Peter Spadafore, uh, and the City Council, the district and the council will be partnering to host an anti-gun violence rally on the evening of Tuesday, June 29th at 6.30 to be held at the Everett High School football stadium. There will be much more information to come, but we I, I strongly encourage my colleagues to make yourselves available for that evening, and I strongly encourage all members of our community to join us at this rally to talk about your concerns, talk about what's going on in our community, and how to stop this terrible loss of life, life and terrible violence that's happening with our teenagers. So that's again, Tuesday, June 29th at 6.30 at the Everett High School football stadium. Please plan on being with us that evening. Thanks for bringing this up, Mrs. Willis. It's really important. Thank you, and Madam President, I certainly uh, appreciate that that rally. I think that a show of, of force is important in offering opportunities for the community. But it's kind of the same way I've been saying all along about how I feel about resolutions. I don't like just doing resolutions. I don't just like having events. We need to have uh, a sit down meeting with city leadership and nonprofit leaders to come up with a real plan of execution of involvement. So I appreciate the rally. I don't want to come across as being ungrateful. And I thank you uh, to you and President Spadafore for organizing this. Um, but I just hope that there's a, a, an and at the end of that for, for what's going to be next. Mrs. Willis, are you proposing a district and city intergovernmental relations committee meeting? Um. I would propose even going beyond that um, and specifically inviting members of, of the public to participate in that. Okay. But I do think that maybe we could start with an IGR meeting 
um, and then go from there. Okay, I'm on it. Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you very much. Thank you for having this conversation. I think that as board members and the school, we need to have all the documents and every investigation is going on to see how they can help us in changing the cultures of the schools. And to in that committee or another committee to study what what really going before that happened or after that happened, they happen in the school or happen close to the school. And I think having all honest investigation, we need to have this uh, uh, knowledge in order, in order to be more informative and have a good plan for the Lansing School District. And also just to, it's so many times that we are doing that and then we forget, we spent three or four days in, in sorrow, but I think we didn't do anything like <coughs> a, a board member is presenting, I think it's necessary, but we need information that they have that we can do a better job than our schools. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I think we, we haven't been in schools this year, okay? So we haven't had the contact with the students that generally we would have um, pre and post pandemic. So I think our goal is to prepare ourselves to address those issues once students return to the buildings. And how do we address that in a way that, that it'll mean something and be effective? Um, I think the work needs to be done now to be ready for uh, uh, September when schools, uh, buildings open and, and we have the students in the buildings themselves. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your attention to this. Okay. Uh, if there are no further points of discussion related to Mrs. Willis's topic. Okay, let's move on and transition, switch lanes a little bit to bid farewell to our beloved outgoing superintendent, Mr. Sam Sinecropi. Um, I know, Sam, that we did celebrate you earlier in the week, but I also would like to say something about you, if you don't mind. So in the boardroom, there's a wall with framed photos of all of the Lansing School District's former superintendents. Each picture frame has a plaque that denotes that superintendent's years of service. Sam and I were joking a while ago that among other superintendents who served for 8, 10, 15, 20 years, his plaque simply says that Sam served from 2020 to 2021. As superintendent. Right. <laughs> yes, that's a short tenure. But those dates certainly don't take into account Sam's decades upon decades of service to this district nor do those dates reflect exactly how consequential 2020 to 2021 was. Sam, you saved us. And by us, I mean the students, the families, the executive team, and the board. This district owes you an unpayable debt of gratitude. You've been my partner, my mentor, my sounding board, and my friend. Thank you, Sam. We have a plaque for you, Sam, and I'll read it. With our greatest appreciation, in special recognition and appreciation for your many years of outstanding performance and dedication to excellence in the Lansing School District. You have made a difference. Thank you. Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. It is very, very difficult to follow you and this great uh, honor in the superintendent. It's not just one, one year only, it's the actions that you do during this time we are celebrating here with Mr. Sinecropi. But Mr. Sinecropi and Lansing School District 
is an identity for more than 70 years. And he started in, when he was in, kinder, in kindergarten, their parents already was connected to Lansing School District. He was a principal, a teacher, a, a director of the area of Easter, uh, and then um, the, he came back to Lansing School District to work in the human resources and work in finance, and now superintendent. But also his wife is part of the Lansing School District. She was a great nurse at Pattingill Middle School with 1,100 students every day. Many, they went to the clinic. And she knew exactly what kind of medicine everybody has to take at what hour, and called the parents, and did that with such charisma, with such love to the kids, the, the, the really, the whole clinic was a, a place that everybody loved. And then the children, I had two of them in Pattingill, one for all and all for one. Then after that, now has three grandchildren in our district. Then Lansing School District and San Sinecropi is the same thing. And um, he finished a few minutes ago saying, Lansing School District be, will be always in my heart. I want to say, San Sinecropi, you always be in the heart of the Lansing School District. Uh, just today, I was at a meeting, and we were talking about this, that, and the other, and then the school district came up and says, oh, you, you guys have a new superintendent. I said, well, not yet, you know, July 1st, um, kind of kiddingly, and this is, yeah. And, you know, the, the only thing I can say about Sam, uh, besides knowing all this other stuff, is that, Sam, you're an inspiration for many. The way you, the way you came through the, through the system, through the ranks, if you will, I mean, you know this district from top to bottom and bottom to top. So you, you are an inspiration. And it, it, I know there's a saying in Espanol that Cesar Chavez, si se puede. Yes, we can. Yes, you did it. You did it with hard work, uh, perseverance, uh, and of course, education is a key to a lot of, to everything. So uh, you are an inspiration to many. Thank you. Yes, I would also like to thank the heart of the Lansing School District. I have known uh, of his trajectory. I have followed him. I have respected him. I have admired him. I think he is one of the most outstanding human beings I have ever met. I, uh, my heart is broken that he's leaving. Uh, I wish he could, we could co convince him to stay longer. Uh, I wish him the best. Uh, I send you a big hug. I, uh, I know you will be missed by, any, by many people. And as Guillermo said a little while ago, Mr. Lopez, and my neighbors all said to tell you hi and to give you a big hug. Most of the kids and most of them are either teachers or parents or they graduated from uh, 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 the Lansing Public Schools, of course, and so like everybody else. But uh, since we see each other while we're biking or walking, everybody sent you their heart and uh, a great retirement and a great life. Thank you very much, sir, for your, your incredible contribution to the Lansing Public Schools and to our city. Stop. Can you turn your mic off? Do any of our virtual colleagues want to, Mrs. Willis? Thank you. <clears throat> it's ironic I asked to save this to the end, but I can't stop crying, so maybe we should have done this one first. Um, Ironically enough, uh, uh, Madam President and I did not coordinate our comments 
<clears throat> but the concept of you saving us, Mr. Sinekropi, is was going to be part of my story. So my mom's favorite story to tell about you um, is from when I was in the third grade. We had just arrived home from school and my mom fell. Um, and instead of calling 911 or my dad even, we called the school to call for Mr. Sinekropi. <laughs> and um, when Mr. Sinekropi came to our house, and brought two staff with him to sit with us so we could take my mom to the emergency room. When he was helping my mom sign in for the, for the emergency treatment, when they asked him why he was there, he said, I'm here with my friend. And my mom always shares this story because he could have said, I'm here with a, a, a student's mom, parent or something, but he said, I'm here with a friend. And that's the way that Mr. Sinekropi treats everyone that he comes across in, in contact with. And that has been an invaluable um, skill and something that we're definitely going to miss. And so in December of 2019, when we needed help, I called Mr. Sinekropi. Um, so I just really appreciate you. And um, for the record, my over under with your family between now and when you're going to call us is 90 days to ask for a job to do something because you're going to be bored. So just so you know, that's my over under. And my final comment is just to just one more time, Mr. Sinekropi, can you remind us what high school you graduated from? I think I, I think I'm a Viking. I, I really think so. remember that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> actually, for the record, if you're going down as I think that actually should have been on your plaque. Um, but I, I just want to say i appreciate you please don't be a stranger um and just thank you for all that you've done thank you can i do something we were in fort wayne indiana checking the new superintendent of that year and i was sick that they took me to the hospital at 5 30 in the afternoon we're supposed to go to the Board of Education to hear on the Board of Education in Fort Wayne. They took me to the hospital, and you know who was there with me? Sam Sinekropi. And I stay all the time until 11 because they start taking all kinds of rays in my, my brains because they thought that my, my, my brain will come back. But who was there all these seven hours or so many hours, I didn't go to the board meeting was Mr. Sanchez Necropis. When you make sacrifices, sacrifices like that, an action like that, sooner or later, they pay you back. And that is the main reason why OI today, we tell him with honors, enjoy life, thank you for being superintendent of the Lansing School District. Super Sam. Super Sam. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Any other comments from virtual board members this evening? Okay. We'll move on to our final item. I'm not going to try and follow that. So. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. You, Fair enough. Uh, Dr. Rodriguez, I was remiss. Can you give your secretary's report, please? Okay. I'm sorry I talked too much today. I um, apologize. But next regular board meeting will be Thursday, July 8th. And that's with Ben. So Ben, you better bring your A game. <laughs> and we will meet somebody, but a new superintendent, welcome. Thursday, July 15th, the board has been canceled. On Thursday, July 22nd, tentative regular board meeting. Then be alert, the program will be by the Thursday, July 8th, we will be, we will know exactly what is going on. That is all I have present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Any other comments from board members this evening? I don't want to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With no further business before the board at 715, we are adjourned. <laughs>